My name is Amata, and in this Red Gamer Tech video, I am here to talk about the very thorny topic of Xbox Game Pass. Now, you might say, okay, why is it thorny? It's really good value for the consumer. And yes, it is. It's great for us. But what we're having here is lots of comments from UK independent retailers about Game Pass. Now, obviously, I covered the other day that Austrian retailer who announced they're no longer going to be stocking Xbox products in response to the Game Pass and we've had various comments from, again, UK independent stores that are basically following along that same logic. So I'm basically discussing from their perspective how they think it's basically going to, quote, kill us outright. So this is going to be a bit of a uh, in-depth video. However, the quotes that I'm going to mention here are going to be from a gamesindustry.biz article, which is rather extensive, and I'll link that in the description below if you want to give it a read. I would recommend it because I'm only going to pull a couple just to kind of talk about the topic in general, but that is where they're coming from. So go give their article a read because it is really, really cool and um, very well done indeed. So obviously, again, this is great for the consumer. No problem with it myself. I actually think it's actually pretty damn good value for us. However, retailers are unsurprisingly unimpressed. And to give you a bit of a look see into why, well, it should be obvious why, but we have some comments. Now, the first one I'm going to go for is Stuart Benson of Extreme Games in Leicestershire. And he said, quote, essentially, it's made our Xbox business worthless overnight. You've got the whole section sat there. And why would people buy a 12 to 15 pound secondhand game when they can't, when they can just pay a tenner and get a massive catalogue of titles to keep them going? Effectively, overnight, they've wiped massive value off our company and made it not worth doing. Why should we support them and sell their consoles and accessories if we're going to get very little out of it? We don't make anything off their digital selection. It's pretty pointless. We might as well go where we're supported, which is Sony. So here's the thing. I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit here. I definitely have sympathy for these guys because it's definitely got to be quite frightening, especially as an independent store. Like if this was like game or whatever, it would be a bit different. But this is obviously an independent store run probably by, by a family or what have you. And this is definitely going to have a large impact on that business. However, I've always been of the opinion that when it comes to movements and revolutions and changes within industry, the key to survival is evolve or die. Like we have seen how various companies, for example, Blockbuster just didn't get with the times and now they're gone. Like, the empty shell of one still sits in my hometown, for instance. You know, it's not like we saw an article years ago saying, Netflix is great for the consumer, but it will kill us outright, say Blockbuster. It was that the answer would be, like, well, tough. Get with the times. And obviously they didn't. And, you know, RIP Blockbuster. So I'm just saying, like, it's definitely an issue, but, and I'm not saying they're wrong for not stocking Xboxes. Obviously, if it's, if it's too expensive for them to stock and people aren't going to buy it anymore, then makes perfect sense. I'm simply saying that they also need to think about, okay, how are we going to evolve with this and try and still make people buy Xbox games from us? Because to be honest, I don't think retail is going to die overnight because of Xbox Game Pass. Not everyone likes to buy digital. Some people like having the physical disc in their hands, or the case to be more exact. Don't hold the disc. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean. <clears throat> For various reasons. So, you know, that's fair enough. And obviously not everyone has an amazing internet connection, especially here in the UK. It can be extremely spotty based upon your provider, based upon the area of your country. To be honest, it's like that anywhere, even in the US. Like some areas are going to be like amazing internet. You know, I'm basically living in the future, man. And then you know, you've got some guy who's like just a couple of a couple of streets over on the next state or what have you. And he's got, you know, state uh, internet that's being powered by a tired hamster on a wheel. So, you know, while that's happening, retail brick and mortar is not going anywhere however the main thing is a lot of people get in their physical from say amazon or other online e-tailers and this is again why i think that they should take this as a warning like hey this is kind of a shift in the industry here things have been going increasingly digital for years you need to change and obviously they've decided to change by not selling xbox products okay fair enough but i'm just saying you know the evolve or die and there's also one thing I want to draw attention to as well. Now, it isn't just about uh, pre-owned games, because it isn't. And I'll get to first-party stuff in a second. But I don't really have much sympathy saying about, oh, we're going to lose out on these second-hand sales. Because, well, okay, I love second-hand games. I bought a ton of them. Most of my PS2 games, if not all of them, except maybe Okami, which I did buy at launch, were bought, like, 
probably like a year, maybe more after they came out and they're worth like five pounds on the game station bargain bin or whatever. So, you know, I have extensive PS2 collection. Almost all of it was pre-owned because I was a poor student at the time. So I'm not going to say second game games are bad because they're not. They're great. However, again, playing devil's advocate a little bit from the perspective of Microsoft, that's not really much of an argument. It's like, okay, a pre-owned sale which we, which we made zero pounds. Gee. Okay, moving on. I'm just saying, like, that's not really a, that valid an argument. The valid argument, or the more valid argument, is to be made from the new games, the first party games. Games like, say, Monster Hunter, for instance, which one of the guys does bring up. And this is Stan Stangroon of Stan's Games down in uh, Cornwall. And he says, quote, if they're going to do this, I won't bother stocking Xbox. If you only make three or four pounds on Xbox games like New Monster Hunter, if you're lucky, they'll kill the second-hand market or reckon it w the public won't like it in the end. I saw the Monster Hunter this morning and the guy's already brought it back. And on kind of a similar comments we have from Paul Lemisuria, um, excuse me, I probably just butchered his name, I'm very sorry. And he said, quote, it's hard not to have the same stance as the Austrian retailer. Game Pass will have an effect on first-party titles. We have already told Exertis we will not be stocking Sea of Thieves at all. Why bother when supermarkets will throw out less than cost, e-tailers will break street dates, which are a joke, and ship up to five days before release cheaper than us, and now Microsoft is throwing it on Game Pass for a tenner. So yeah, that I can definitely get more behind from, the, again, playing Devil's Advocate a little bit. They're basically saying that, you know, it's not even worth for them stick, stocking the first party games, but to be honest, I, again, I don't see brick and mortar dying overnight. This is definitely going to be a bit of a death knell for them, don't get me wrong, but again, this is why you kind of need to think of ways to make it more worthwhile for people to come into your store and buy them physically versus getting them on Game Pass. And what they might be, well, offer them cheaper, that sort of thing. Offer digital codes, sell vouchers for Game Pass, that sort of stuff. You know, I'm just spitballing a few ideas. I'm just putting out the air here. So I'm just saying I can definitely sympathise why they don't like this. But it is simply the movements of the industry. We kind of knew something like this was coming. We knew we were moving towards an ever digital future, which in some ways is not great. And in some ways is it's not great because obviously you don't really own the thing that you buy, digitally speaking. And personally, I prefer the physical uh, physical copy. Obviously, my PC collection is 100% digital because, well, Steam is a thing. But obviously, on, on console, I don't. I think I own one digital game, which is Resogun, because it, that's a great game, and it came to PlayStation Plus when the game when the console launched. So, you know, the only digital games I have are through PlayStation Plus. Everything else is physical because I don't. I personally just prefer it. Obviously, it's entirely personal. But this is definitely going to hit. Indies more than say your Game Stops or your WalMarts or your games to use a UK uh, chain because obviously we are talking about UK indie retailers here, and I definitely don't want to see any indies squeezed out of existence because you know there used to be this amazing game um, game shop in my hometown, and it's just not there anymore. I went back after the first time in a long time to visit family and stuff over Christmas, and it's just gone. I don't know how long it had been gone? Don't know, but it's just not there anymore. So I, don't, I definitely don't want to see that happen, but I'm just basically saying that it's not up to Microsoft to go, oh, okay, you guys aren't going to make much money, we're not going to do this. That's not really up to Microsoft, it's up to you to figure out how you're going to do your business. So that's kind of my unpopular opinion on Game Pass, to be honest. I just think these retailers, as much as it sucks, need to you know brainstorm and think of ways to stay afloat despite this, and if that way is to not sell Xbox games, then fair enough. That's that's obviously you know your business. I don't I'm not going to come and burst into your store and tell you how to run run your business because I don't know anything about running an actual physical store. But you can kind of get where I'm going. Anyway, that is me done for this video. Thank you very much for watching. You will find again the gamesindustry.biz article linked in the description below, where you will find way way more quotes and a bunch of research done by them. I have cherry picked a mere few to back up this particular video. So with all that said, thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.